Hello everyone. Uh, today we'll be uh, learning about phospholipids as surfactants and acute respiratory distress syndrome, which is once again a very important part of biochemistry 4.1, chemistry and metabolism of lipids. So let us begin with pulmonary surfactants, which are also known as lung surfactants. Pulmonary surfactant is a surface active lipoprotein which is chiefly a phospholipid formed by the alveolar cells. Now the molecule which makes the lung surfactant which is a phospholipid is seen in the air water interface of the alveoli. So we can consider this as an alveolar cell and this molecule over here is the lung surfactant. Now the hydrophilic head of this lung surfactant molecule dips in the water as you can see this is the hydrophilic head region which is dipping in the water area and the hydrophobic tail faces towards the air now this is the hydrophobic air and this portion is the uh, air water interface of the alveoli so the molecule is seen to be at the air water interface of the alveoli the surface tension is reduced uh, due to the presence of these lung surfactant molecules and because of this reduction in surfactants, the lung is able to carry its function properly. Uh, and see the composition of lung surfactant. So this is a brief about the major composition, major molecules that form the lung surfactant. Uh, it includes phospholipids and proteins um, chiefly. Uh, among the phospholipids, phosphatidylcholine which is also known as lecithin, phosphatidylglycerol and sphingomyelin are the chief phospholipids that uh, form the surfactant. And there are uh, some proteins which are, known, which are known as surfactant proteins, abbreviated as SP. So there are SPA, SPB, SPC and SPD which um, form the surfactant. Now uh, we'll continue with the composition of lung surfactant with a uh, slight detail. So let us see the lung surfactant is produced by the type 2 alveolar cells which are known as pneumocytes and this surfactant is a complex of phosphatidylcholine which exists as dipalmitoyl phosphatidylcholine and it is abbreviated as DPPC which forms 80% of the surfactant molecule. The next component is the phosphatidylglycerol uh, plus phosphatidylenositol and plus phosphatidylethanol and all these three phospholipids make 20% of the lung surfactant. Uh, apart from that it also includes sphingomyelin which is also a phospholipid and it includes cholesterol it is around 5%. Uh, and it, as we discussed in the previous slide, the surfactant proteins called SPA, SPB, SPC and SPD, which is also the uh, uh, 5%. And now the lung synthesizes sphingomyelin uh, between the 28th to 32nd week of gestation, uh, which is an important component of the lung surfactant. Now let us see a little more in detail about dipalmitoyl phosphatidylcholine which is abbreviated as DPPC and which is the major component of the lung surfactant. It has 216 carbon saturated fatty acids and a phosphate group and a choline group attached to it. The DPPC is the strongest surfactant molecule in the pulmonary surfactant mixture. So it has a very important role to play as it is the strongest uh, surfactant in the complete mixture. And you can see in this picture, this is the alveoli and here are the surfactant molecules. These are the phospholipids that are aligned and uh, these are the surfactant proteins. You can see here surfactant protein B and surfactant protein C. 
you can also see some amount of cholesterol and these phospholipids are aligned um, in, in such a way that the head faces the aqueous phase and the tail faces the uh, air. Now the mechanism of action of lung surfactant. The lecithin sphingomyelin ratio which is also known as LS ratio of amniotic fluid is an index of fetal maturity. So uh, only by this ratio we can come to know that the uh, lung of the fetus has received, re reached its maturity and it is capable of carrying out the respiratory function. Now the ratio of LS, that is the LS ratio of 2 indicates full lung maturity which means that the lung is mature and capable of carrying out the respiratory function. Uh, a, surf, a ratio of 2 lowers the alveolar surface tension at the air liquid interface of the alveolus um, and it also prevents by doing this it prevents the collapse of alveoli it improves gas exchange and it activates macrophages to kill pathogens so it has both uh, a respiratory function by maintaining surface tension as well as it has some immunological function because it activates macrophages to kill the pathogens entering the uh, lungs. So now uh, this is a picture of uh, preterm lungs and full term lungs of a fetus. So by looking at these pic uh, this picture you will get an idea about how the preterm lungs look and the full term lungs look. As you can see in this picture which is labeled as preterm lungs 24 to 35 weeks gestational age. Now here you can see that the lung is not fully developed. Yeah, And in this second picture which is labeled as term lungs which we can consider as full term lungs which is 36 weeks gestational age or to 3 years of age. Here you can see a fully developed lung. It's very clearly shown in the in this beautiful picture. Now, uh, this has been adapted from Moore and uh, Persuad 2008. The baby born early will have lungs that are smaller as shown in this picture and less developed and at birth than those of the full term babies. So, this is a comparison of the uh, preterm and full term baby lungs. Now, uh, this is another picture in which you can see that the uh, this is an immature lung and the uh, there is alveoli within the lungs the alveoli here are not fully developed the blood vessel circulation is also not fully developed and uh, compared to that this is the uh, structure of mature uh, alveolus where the blood circulation uh, is sufficient and the alveoli are well developed so this is a comparison of the mature and immature lungs. So I think both these diagrams will give you a lot of clarity on how the lungs are, are there in a preterm baby and in a full term baby and what role uh, the lung surfactant can play in a mature lung where the alveoli can function properly. Now, from here then we can go to see what is the deficiency of lung surfactant leads to and what is respiratory distress syndrome which is abbreviated as RDS. Deficient, uh, in, uh, it is generally deficient in uh, preterm babies. Uh, the insufficient surfactant leads to reduced pul pulmonary compliance. Uh, there is increased uh, surface tension, increased risk of alveoli collapse, reduction in total surface area of gaseous exchange, reduction in alveolar capillary diffusion capacity, uh, there is hypoxia and hypercapnia uh, develops and all these together uh, will uh, lead to 
respiratory distress syndrome so you can see this is an alveoli uh, consider these two as alveoli one is a smaller alveoli and this is a larger alveoli and both are aligned by surfactant uh, so this is uh, now this is another schematic diagram which is showing a fully developed normal alveoli whereas this is a damaged alveoli where the surfactant is uh, deficient so the surfactant has collapsed yeah, sorry the alveoli has collapsed now acute respiratory distress syndrome which is abbreviated as ARDS uh, it is a syndrome of acute pulmonary inflammation it is characterized by sudden onset of impaired gas exchange and pulmonary edema the lungs vulnerable to lung infection uh, are vulnerable to lung infection in the first year of life uh, the increased permeability of alveolar capillar a capillary area uh, are due to the endothelium as you can see there is increased permeability over here so there is buildup of fluid in the air sacs there is damage to the alveolar cells that leads to edema of the alveoli and steroids like uh, dexamethasone and betamethasone uh, prevent ARDS uh, glucocorticoids increase the synthesis and prom promote the differentiation of lung cells uh, and they increase the synthesis of um, lung surfactants. The features of ARDS include fast breathing, respiratory rate is more than 60 per minute, there are retractions, grunting and cyanosis is seen. Now let us look at the chest x-ray, uh, how it appears uh, for a patient having uh, acute respiratory distress syndrome. So you can see these are the two chest x-rays. This is the normal chest x-ray of a healthy lung and this is the lung of an ARDS uh, patient where you can see this whitish uh, uh, coloration. It appears like white out. This is known as white out and this is also called ground glass appearance of the lungs. This is due to absence of air entry into the lungs. Now there is air bronchogram due to air in bronchus and bronchioles. So the bronchioles will be visible in the x-ray. You can see these thin lines. These are the bronchioles. So air bronchogram refers to the phenomenon of air filled bronchi which are dark as shown marked by the arrow here uh, being made visible by the opaque opacification of the surrounding alveoli. Now, what are the tests that can be carried out to check the fetal lung maturity? As it was mentioned earlier that the LS ratio should be around uh, uh, at least 2, 2 is to 1 or more. And this indicates the uh, maturity of the lung. Here L stands for lecithin and S stands for sphingomyelin. Mm, the other, uh, so we can check the amniotic fluid and find out the LS ratio uh, in that sample. Then there is laminar body count test, surfactant to albumin ratio and a shake test. So I'll briefly tell you about the shake test where amniotic fluid sample is taken and ethanol uh, is added in the test tube and it has to, uh, we have to shake the tube. Uh, there will be bubbled ring. So this is the ring. Uh, if you look from the surface of the tube, you can see the bubbles here. So bubbles will form ring after 15 minutes. And uh, this will indicate a mature surfactant. And if there are less bubbles, the ring will be incomplete. And it will be called immature surfactant or immature lung. So you can see that... Uh, Positive test indicates that the fetal lung is mature. So the test tube surface has formed a complete ring or which is full of bubbles. There is an intermediate. Um, uh, this is the intermediate maturity sample which is showing incomplete ring. That it's not complete like this one. So this is an intermediate maturity sample. And this sample 
shows very few bubbles or no bubbles so which is showing uh, a sample having having uh, no uh, has not achieved the mat uh, lung majority so this is uh, how to check the fetal lung majority by shake test principally and by ls ratio so uh, i hope you like the video uh, for more videos like and share and don't forget to subscribe hit the bell icon thank you